All right. I want to thank everybody for taking a few minutes to come in this afternoon so that we could have our final meeting on safety and security. You'll remember that at the beginning of the year we started off with our initial safety meeting uh, and we want, to, we want to assess where we are uh, in terms of accomplishments and how things have gone this year. You'll remember that our safety goals were to secure all the classrooms, to secure all the buildings, pupil transportation, all campuses, ensure that students feel safe as reflected in increased scores on school climate surveys, we wanted to seek a decrease in office referrals for certain disciplinary issues, and we wanted to create a sense of ownership. We wanted the teachers to feel like they were involved in this process. So let's look at how uh, we, we were going into this. And we looked at the Georgia Student Health Surveys, and we found that a, a trend existed, that as we looked at the health surveys uh, moving through the grades, we found that students had less of a sense of safety as they moved farther into their school careers. As they moved from the elementary to the middle, to the junior, to the high school, uh, you can see that the numbers declined slightly uh, in, in terms of questions about their safety. So we want to address that. I want to see what we can do. Of course, we had a data analysis and a planning team, and I want to thank both of those groups. We actually ended up with two teams. We ended up with an external team uh, that was more interested in the external safety of our buildings specifically um, and that involved and big thanks go out to these guys of course our building administrators our board attorney uh, the sheriff don craig jeff hall uh, fire chief elrod we included 911 in these discussions so very positive things came out of that we're going to look at we also had an internal team that team looked at ways to improve the sense of safety within the buildings um, and you'll remember from the beginning of the year, mindset was an important part of that. So we want to see the impact of mindset, mindset training, um, if, if it's been a positive thing. Um, and so our question is, and the question that we want to see if we answered with this group today, will the incorporation of the de-escalation aspects of mindset training district-wide lead to a measurable decrease in discipline referrals for defiance, disrespect, disruption, not following rules or corrections, and verbal aggression? So. If you look at the literature, a literature review would tell you that there's reason to be hopeful. Keeping in mind, remember at the beginning of the year we told you that no school district has ever attempted what we are attempting with mindset. We are doing something brand new. Uh, and so there have been some mistakes. There's, there have been a couple of times when we've had to back up and, and come at this thing from a different angle. But when you look at the research, there certainly is a reason that we need to be doing these things. Uh, Research coming out of the University of Wisconsin Whitewater finds that 10 to 20 percent of the students in a middle or a, or a high school uh, are behaviorally at risk. When you extrapolate those numbers and apply them to us, we, we're looking at possibly upwards of 430 students, which is definitely significant. Intervention Central talks to us and tells us that even students not identified as having behavioral or emotional disorders may occasionally have episodes that mindset can help with the de-escalation model. Um, it could be things like peer bullying or frustration over academic performance. Most every student encounters those things, and we need to have our, make sure that our teachers have the tools to address those. Further, we can notice that uh, some research coming out there tells us that victims of bullying lack skills of emotional regulation, that they tend to act out, for example. Another reason for us to focus on de-escalation. Um, and then, of course, finally, we find that there are additive benefits. If we are able to accomplish this, we also find that there's the additive benefit of combining teacher concern with their students leads to concern for themselves, which is a positive thing. So uh, now there's been some resistance and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But when you look at our numbers, data-wide, uh, district-wide data, excuse me, you look at office referrals and minor referrals, uh, you can see those the trends there have been uh, trending upward and that number remember is the same number that I showed you at the beginning of the year uh, and so we want to focus on those some of you had asked earlier if we would back out the tardy numbers and so we have done that and we have carried those numbers out and you can see there again uh, district data with those numbers backed out we see something very interesting uh, the number that we expected to see of office referrals based on uh, trends they have declined from what we expected not a bad thing when you disaggregate those numbers you see again 
numbers are down. 17, 18, verbal aggression, for example, is down 50%. Not following class rules or directions is down 50%. Every category that we looked at, those numbers are actually down. So a, a very positive trend there. Now, can we attribute all of that to mindset? Probably not, but certainly uh, something has had a positive impact. And so we want to continue to focus, and we're going to continue to focus on both. We're going to continue to focus on the internal. Uh, we're going to continue to work on mindset training. We know that it's going to be a long process. We know that it is not going to be easy. We know that there are positives, but we've got to build on those positives, uh, and we've got to make sure that we keep moving in, in the right direction. You'll also notice there, uh, we, we, I told you earlier, we made some changes. Uh, as we move deeper into this school year, uh, our administrators and many of our teachers were coming back and saying that they did not feel that mindset training was really catching on. That as the trainers came into the buildings and did their work, they did not feel that it was long-term impactful. And so the question became, how can we make it impactful? And so we decided, <coughs> between ourselves and the principals, we decided that during the second semester we would take groups of teachers from each building and mindset certify those teachers and let them become the building leaders. So every building now in this district has a team of teachers that are mindset certified who now have the responsibility of making sure that they make mindset their own and that as we move forward this becomes something that the teachers themselves carry on, which I feel is a very positive necessary thing. And just to, re, just to remind you from our, our beginning of the year discussion, what are the things that we're going to continue to carry forth? And, and one of those is we're going to continue to emphasize pass, promoting choice and trust, avoiding power struggles, seeking proaction, not reaction, trying to set everyone up for success. We had our drawing competition. Some of you probably in the community heard about this thing. Every school had an art competition where they incorporated the calm, alert, and respectful uh, into a dragon, uh, which I thought that went really well, very positive. Quickly, I want to talk to you about the external. It's just as important. Here you see a picture. We're very proud of the collaboration that exists between us, the Sheriff's Department, the Georgia State Patrol. We actually used our high school as a training facility multiple times for active shooter training with local law enforcement. Very positive. So that God forbid if they ever find themselves inside our buildings, they will be familiar with them. We now have in place our camera system I told you about at the beginning of the year. Every classroom has a camera. Every teacher has the emergency uh, beacon around their, their neck. Every teacher has the ability to press that panic button and notify uh, and call out for help so that first responders can get there more quickly. We now are in soft lockdown at all times. We continue to practice our emergency procedures. Buildings have become more secure. We have secured all front entrances. Uh, we're installing card readers throughout the system. We have even at our oldest school now, Tate Elementary, we have also installed a safety vestibule down there. Buses, transportation, we now have in place, told all of you about it at the beginning of the year, we now have in place our GPS locator system on all of our buses along with our new communication system so that all times if a Pickens County School District bus is on the road, we are able to immediately identify its location, which is, I think that is an awesome thing. We continue to improve on communication and our relationships with 911. The Welcome Center, smashing success. We talked about it at the beginning of this school year. Uh, it has been responsible for countless cars turning around without ever getting all the way down. So we now are able to restrict the flow of traffic going into our high school. All of our classes, with the exception of ag, is now inside the building. Um, and we're gonna continue to move forward. Our renovations at the junior high ground is breaking as the school empties at the end of this school year. The remodel will begin by the time the kids come back, 1st of August, that building will be completely fenced in, completely remodeled on the interior. We're going to work with the Sheriff's Department to renumber our, our classrooms at the high school so that if they ever find themselves in that building, uh, they will be familiar with the numbering system and it will be a numbering system that makes sense. Chief Deputy Hall has been in every single teacher's classroom in this district to talk to them about safety, which I think is awesome. 
There's been a lot of stuff that would not have been possible without the help of the Pickens County Sheriff's Department, the City of Jasper Police Department, the Georgia State Patrol. We've had active shooter training, 911, fire and rescue from Pickens County has been involved. It has been an extremely positive experience and you'll, it continues uh, to move forward. Uh, so we're very, we're, we're very excited about the safety initiatives that exist in this county. We're not there. We will never be there. We will never have this system completely 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt, 24-7, completely safe. But we can always strive toward that, and that is our goal, and that will always be what we continue to try to do. Our door is always open. Please feel free if you have any questions, any comments, call me, call the superintendent. We are always available, always willing to sit down with you because at the end of the day, they're not our schools, they're your schools. So I hope everybody has an awesome summer. I have enjoyed touching base with you today and talking to you about where we are and where we're going. Um, and I look forward to the start of another school year. Thank you very much.